Hey folks, welcome back to the channel for another edition of our Pro-Am Doubles Disc Review, where I will serve as the amateur with the slightly worse form and slightly lower arm speed, and my man Matt Gibbons here will represent the Pro with the finer form and the big boom sauce of an arm. That way, you're going to be able to get kind of a full read on how this might fly for you, depending on where you're at in your own world as far as arm speed and experience and stuff like that goes. But without further ado, we have to give a shout out to our partner who helps make this all possible, Sarah Land Pharmacy. I'm sure you're surprised a pharmacy sponsored this video, but Sarah Land Pharmacy is actually the best disc golf store in Southern Alabama. They carry a wide variety of discs from all the top manufacturers, including Innova, Discraft, Discmania, and all the Trilogy brands, as well as MVP and Axiom. They also carry plenty of plastic from lesser-known brands, such as Lone Star Disc and Thought Space Athletics. Their pricing is fantastic. And speaking of pricing, they have a very robust used disc section where you can get some lightly used plastic for a fantastic price. And you can also pick up various disc golf equipment that'll help you along the way. So if you're in Mobile County or any of the surrounding areas, or heck, even if you're on the Eastern Shore, definitely pass on by the Sarah Land Pharmacy as they have a wide variety of equipment that I'm sure you'll love. It's definitely worth the trip. You certainly won't regret it. All right, so now that we're back from that, uh, Mac, why don't you let us know what this we're going to be throwing today? So we're going to be throwing the Swirly S Blends 2. Uh, the flight number is coming at 3401. Uh, I think the idea is kind of a stable to overstable putt and approach disc, something that you're going to have a consistent approach shot with. Yeah, I mean, I kind of likened it a little bit to the Envy, but maybe a little more stable just from like the brief amount of experience I have with this disc. It also has some similar vibes to like a Ringer if you're a Discraft person, uh, very similar shape, maybe just a little bit deeper than the Ringer. Um, so I expect it to be like a pretty straight flying disc that can actually handle some wind, but has some consistent fade. That's at least what my guess is going to be, but we're going to throw it and we're going to find out. We actually do have some Envies and a Ringer that we'll compare it to. And again, I'll be serving as the am side of this and then matt givens here will be our pro again if you don't know matt please go give him a follow he puts out a lot of content on his own youtube and instagram uh, he's also a guy that gives lessons in the mobile area if you're interested in that hit him up uh, and so yeah without further ado let's let's start throwing some plastic all right so i'm gonna be throwing a series of different discs here to just kind of give you a vibe of how this tune flies i thought a good comparison would be the envy as well as the ringer so i have the envy in the uh Prism Plasma Plastic, as well as an Eclipse Envy, a more overstable one. Then we got the Ringer, then we got the Tombs. So I'm going to try to throw all these relatively about the same. Obviously account for human error. I'm not perfect, but I'm going to try to release these mostly flat uh, and just try to get them out there and see how they fly. We are dealing with some swirly winds out here today, so I'll try to keep you posted on what it's like, but right now it feels kind of like a little bit of a right to left crosswind, so just keep that in mind with the flight. As you can see, that was the Envy and the Plasma Plastic, and it flew pretty dead straight for the majority of the flight with just a little bit of subtle fade at the end. So now we're going to the Eclipse Envy. So I threw that one a touch lower, obviously, but it's flew very similar to the Plasma Envy. I've noticed that the Prism Plasma Envies are actually a little more stable than, like, let's say the normal Plasma ones. So they actually fly pretty similar to the Eclipse, so I'm not too surprised to see a similar line there. But as you can see, pretty dead straight. So now we're going to try the Ringer from Discraft, which is a disc we kind of compared it, the tune to as far as just kind of how it looked and felt. I've actually never thrown one before, so let's see what happens. so definitely slightly more overstable and so that kind of gives you a vibe of the same class of disc that the tombs in so now let's get to the tombs and see how they compare whoa 
So I'm not sure if I released on like a little bit of hyzer, and so maybe that's the discrepancy, but that definitely seemed to have a considerable amount more fade than the Envy and was roughly similar to the Ringer, maybe a little bit more. So definitely a touch more overstable, but still had a good straight fly at the start. We got one more to throw. Yeah, I released that one early for sure. Um, but it still had that same more dramatic fade to it. So I think at a lower arm speed as an amateur, you can expect the tomb in this kind of plastic to fly slightly more overstable than the Envy, depending on what plastic your Envy's in and it's wear and tear. And I think it kind of compares pretty similar to a ringer if you're a disc rack person. So that's kind of what I got out of it. Let's let Mac have a shot and see what he thinks. All right, just to give you an update, the Envy that I threw first that I actually got up in the air and the Ringer basically went the exact same distance. The Ringer was just a little more to the left because it was a little bit more stable. Those were both at right around 260 feet. The Tombs, on the other hand, were about 10 feet shorter and definitely faded a lot more to the left, though I will admit my second throw was definitely a little bit of an early release, so it was a little bit more dramatic than it should have been. But that's just kind of an idea on what I got out of it as an am. But now we'll let Matt give it a shot. So now I'm going to do something pretty similar to Dustin. Um, I'm going to throw the Ringer, the Envy, and the Tomb uh, kind of flat and harder. But I'm also going to throw the Envy and the Tomb on a slight bit of Anheuser since we have two of them just to kind of show you what sort of stability comparisons we've got there. So first off, we've got the Prism Plasma Envy. Stayed pretty straight, even had a tiny bit of flip up there. Uh, now let's try it with the tomb. You can see that one didn't really have any flip up at all. Held straight for a little bit, but then really dumped at the end of its flight. Now I'm going to throw the ringer so you can compare them side by side. See, these are the two uh, most comparable molds, so that's why I want to kind of give you the comparisons right one after another. Definitely threw that one a little flatter, maybe even a touch of Anheuser, but you saw it held straight. Definitely did not have the same stability as the tomb. Now I'm going to show you the Envy and the tomb both with a touch of Anheuser. So we saw that one hold its Anheuser angle pretty much the whole flight. Let's see how the tomb compares. Gave that one more Anheuser than the Envy for sure, um, but it kind of held it the same amount, which would suggest that it had more stability to it. So uh, let me go get those distances for you. All right, so after measuring those, that first Envy that I threw came in at just about 300 feet, which if you remember had a little bit more flip up, a little bit more glide to it. Whereas the tomb that I threw immediately after went about 290 feet, uh, which makes sense. It dumped out of its flight a little bit earlier, so it's gonna have a little bit less distance to it. And then the ringer that I threw that went dead straight, didn't really get its full flight, went about the same distance as the tomb. And then for the Anheuser shots, the Envy went at right about 300, um, which makes sense. It's a little bit slower of a disc, a little bit more blunt nose. So it's got less glide, less, uh, less potential flight to it. Whereas the tomb, which has a better nose angle, um, I gave a little bit more Anheuser, so it got more of a full flight than I really wanted to, with that one about 310 feet. So slight differences, but definitely differences to be had. Um, we'll do our final review and then go over everything. All right, folks, so this is gonna be our final thoughts about the tomb. First of all, it's very clear that no matter what your arm speed is, based on what we've seen, it definitely is gonna fly more overstable than something like a Ringer or like an Envy. 
uh, even in this swirly s blend plastic not even glow plastic it still was more stable than the glow envy in our experience so if you're looking for something that's going to get some straight push but have a lot more fade to it compared to something like an envy which is like a very popular throwing putter right now especially with the news with simon and of course with james conrad prior to that this is going to be that more overstable option however what i will say is and we didn't show this on video, but this is nowhere near as overstable as something like a zone or, or something like that, kind of your staple, overstable uh, approach disc. This definitely doesn't have the same integrity on a forehand, by the way. Uh, we kind of tested that off camera. This, along with the Envy, you know, they are going to tend to roll over. They don't really have that torque resistance. So definitely nothing like a zone is what I'm trying to get at, but still a little bit more overstable than your typical straight flying uh, throwing putter. So that's kind of where I'm at with the two. It definitely can fill a slot in your bag if you're looking for something like that. It has a pretty good feel to it. Uh, I think Infinite flies under the radar quite a lot. Their plastic's good, and this is a good mold. Your thoughts? Yeah, I pretty much agree with Dustin. Um, just to reiterate what he said about not having the same stability of a zone, this is definitely not a disc that you would want to try and do any sort of power choppy forehand, you know, S lines with. Um, it doesn't have quite that much stability. What it does have is a good reliable stability for say backhand approach shots. Um, for me, that would be anywhere from that 270 to 300 range, you know, and I can regulate that distance just based off of how much hyzer I give it. So. A good reliable disc that you can really pinpoint uh, distance management with that's that would be what this is for yeah absolutely so uh, let us know what you think in the comments below is this something that maybe you'd like to get your hands on let us know what you thought about the review what we can do in the future to improve these reviews and yeah we'll see you on the next one